excited to welcome our next speaker, So Cold, uh, who will be talking about creating the world of math outside why everyone is inside. Sol is the founder and creative director at the Idea Integration Company. Uh, in his career, he has been named as one of the iMedia 25 internet marketing leaders and innovators, as well as been called one of Canada's best community builders, experiential marketers. Sol has worked for companies such as uh, Zipcar, FreshBooks, uh, Rogers Communication, and Xero.com. So specializes in word of mouth marketing, stand marketing, social media, customer experience, community building, and business courage. Welcome, Saul, and uh, the virtual stage is yours. Oh, okay, great. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for um, you know giving me this opportunity to talk to you guys. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm going to uh, start my talk. I, I start all my talks by setting expectations. When I, when I do a really great talk, uh, like hopefully today will be, I get an e you know I usually get emails after just say, you know, want to say thanks for putting on that lecture today. I honestly thought it was one of the best lectures I've ever listened to, and feel that I learned more in one hour than I did in some semesters in college. Um, Stuff like that's really awesome. Um, every now and then, though, I get uh, an email like this that that basically tells me I'm I'm awful, I'm horrible, and they ask me to to pay for their parking. Um, I I hope today is going to be more like the first than the second, but you know. Who really knows? Hard to tell. We're all inside. Um, hey, since this is the Business Storytelling Summit, I want to start um, my talk with a really interesting story. And you have to pay attention because uh, there's, a, there's a really important lesson in there. So the other day I was talking with my therapist, and I, I know this is going to be globally around the world. So I, I don't know if you guys will, you know, this, this might be lost on some people. But I, I was talking with my therapist the other day, and uh, and she said something to me that was that was really really profound. Uh, she said the thing I like most about making love to you is that I can actually see and feel your heart break a little as we do it, and and I know that you love me, but I also know that I'm not the one you want to be with. So really, really profound statement. It's it's a weird thing for your therapist to say to you, of course, but, you know, she isn't wrong. I, I am totally in love with, with somebody else. And, and, um, and this is her, you know, isn't she gorgeous? I know you guys are thinking, wow, where's the business lesson? Stick with it. You're going to be impressed. Um, isn't she gorgeous? You know, um, I realized that I was crazy in love with this girl when she told me a Batman joke. Uh, I, I'm going to tell you the joke. So the joke is a, a six-year-old is, is walking along the beach and he finds a genie's lamp and he rubs it. Genie pops out and the genie says, uh, I could, uh, I want to grant you uh, one wish. And the child says, uh, I want to be Batman. And uh, the genie kills his parents. Great, great joke, huh? <laughs> I love doing these virtual talks. You can never um, hear the people audibly uh, gasp in horror. Um, so th this girl I'm in love with, she's crazy smart. We like the same things. We talk about meaningful topics or, you know, both of our favorite movies is network. She loves when I make my pecs dance. It's, you know, we, we got a good thing going. Um, and, and when I see a picture of her or when we Skype, you know, Skype is the thing that old people use before Zoom. When when we Skype, you know that that's actually her and that's actually that's my stomach. I get like a visceral feeling in my stomach. I get, you know, it's like you get the those butterflies and nerves the way you do when when you know you're in love with somebody. And you know, when I when I dream about her, I'm not dreaming about, you know crazy, you know, dirty things. I, I'm, I'm dreaming in, in stock photography. I dream about holding our hands and, you know, I dream that we're a black couple, um, you know, in the seventies having a picnic. Cause when, when I dream, I, I'm always, um, black people from the seventies. And, and you see the reason that I have to dream about her and I have to do all these things is she lives in another city. She actually lives in another country. And except for the once or twice uh, we see each other every month before COVID, obviously our relationship is entirely online through text messages or FaceTime and, and things like that. So being virtual makes things really, really harder. You learn, you lose a lot of nuance of just you know, the relationship of, of human interaction. 
I, I played to her the most romantic song in the world, uh, Turn Out the Lights by Teddy Pendergrass. Of course, everybody knows that's the ro most romantic song in the world. And it was hard to gauge her reaction because, you know, she wasn't in the room with me. She wasn't there. And, and that's when I realized that as long as our relationship is entirely online, I'm always going to feel like there's a part of me that wants more. So I, I already told you that, you know, my, my psychiatrist, my therapist said something really profound. That's a really profound statement. I'm going to go back one slide. As long as our relationship is entirely online, I will always feel like there is a part of me that wants more. So, um, when everything's online, you run the risk of people getting busy with work and life and pandemics and just forgetting about you or not understanding intent or, you know, like like now for me and her, um, for, for reasons I'm not even sure about, she isn't happy with me right now. And because I, I'm not investing the time to be face to face with her because obviously I can't, um, it, it's, it's really hard to even know what's going on. So obviously I'm sad. But my reasons for being a little heartbroken right now and also being, you know, completely in love with her is great for you because it's the exact formula for creating great marketing ideas that people will talk about and spread to friends on, on social networks. So I, I assume you caught the formula. I was really clear. I talked about being in love and I talked about stock photography and I talked about, you know, being a black person in the seventies and all those things. I assume you caught it. Um, I, I, you know, when, when I do this in front of live people, they tell me whether or not I need to start over. I'm going to assume you guys are a pretty bright crowd and you don't need me to start over. Um, so just a, a little about me quickly before we dive into this, uh, I collect sneakers. I, I was the guy who launched Zipcar in Canada for 10 years. I wrote comic books and, and supported myself through that. I've done a bunch of stunts, you, you know, you, you know who I am. I don't need to tell you who I am. Um, what I do has nothing to do with SEO or pay-per-click or, or any of that stuff. Um, you know, instead of that, I just touch people, you know, and, and, and you know, if you if, if you recognize this, this image I've chosen for my presentation, that's psychic surgery. It's a really funny thing. Um, you should read all about it. I, good or bad touch. My job is to create experiences that people remember. Um, when I was at Facebook, uh, FreshBooks, I mean, FreshBooks, Facebook. When I was at FreshBooks, uh, you know, we used to do a hundred things a month, small things. We'd throw them out in the air, see um, sort of what caught. If you look at the picture uh, with um, the twister board on the ground, instead of having a trade show booth one year, we just made a twister board and invited people to play Twister with us because the, the rationale behind it was um, when people don't want to deal with trade shows, they look at their feet and they walk really quickly. They don't want to be harassed. So we put our trade show booth on the floor and we invited people to essentially have me lie on top of them. Who isn't going to want to, who isn't going to remember your company if uh, I'm lying on top of you? Another thing we did, I created these lost uh, posters. It was a cat. It says lost five hours a month spent invoicing. And you pulled the tab. You got a free month of um, a free month of uh, fresh books. So that poster cost pennies. It took about 20 minutes to do uh, in, in MS Word. It wasn't even Photoshop. I put them up as a joke once and uh, we got a few hundred uh, free trials. So then I actually invested in it and we put up thousands and we got, you know, we put them up in five different cities. People resonated to this because it was something different. It was an experience. It was, you know, they got the joke right away. Um, based on about a $600 investment, we received almost close to 17,000 uh, trials of our software just based on a throwaway idea that most people, if you pitched it, would say, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. If there's anything I can teach you about um, creating experiences, stupid ideas are, you know, they're always worth trying if they don't cost a lot of money. Um, so the way to do this, I've told you about myself, the way to create these ideas, the way to reach out to people, the way to create experiences, the way to get people talking about your brand, even in a pandemic, is to replicate my little heartbreak story with a little twist. So from now on, when you're brainstorming ideas, you need to consciously think about my, my girlfriend and I and how you're going to accomplish 
three very important things. Um, and you, you want to accomplish all three things, not just two out of the three. So if you remember my story, when I opened this, um, every idea that you're working on, um, it, it must make people laugh. It's really important. Ideas need to connect with people. And if you're not connecting with people, um, they're, they're, they're not going to resonate. So if you can make people laugh, that's great. If you can make people laugh and make people think, well, now you're really onto something because you want to make people think. You want them scratching their head. You want them wondering what's going on. And after that, you want to create a really genuine emotion, even if it's tears. So I, I use this all the time. It makes sense. This is how I built my career. Um, but some of you still look a little confused. So I'm going to explain this a very different way. All ideas, if they're going to be successful, must make people laugh, think, and cry. I tell you, I, I, I've, I've had this wonderful run. I've been doing this for 20 years, and this is the secret. Um, there are a bunch of ways to do this. The easiest way to make people laugh, think, and cry is through pop culture. I'm going to prove it for you. Are you guys ready? Um, just pretend that you're going to scream out and, and say, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Uh, everyone probably remembers exactly where they were when they first heard the Rudy Ray Moore Zodiac album. A am I right? Everybody knows Rudy. Okay. <laughs> Maybe a bad example. I used to, I, I've been I've been talking about Rudy Ray Moore for about a decade. And then Netflix goes ahead and makes a, a Dolomite movie. And all of a sudden, it's not such a, a, a obscure reference anymore. How about um, Arrested Development? Most people know the show Arrested Development. Um, if you, this is where people always clap and say, ooh, Arrested Development, knock my microphone over. Um, if you know Arrested Development, you obviously know the Banana Stand. The Banana Stand was like a character on the show. It was a, an important part of, of everything the show is about. Here's how I used Arrested Development in a real life way to stand out from the crowd and make people laugh and think and cry. So uh, a few years ago, when we were allowed to leave our house, there was this thing called trade shows. What it was, was people would gather in a big room and you would try to sell them things. I um, I was told with about two weeks notice that um, we had decided to exhibit in a big, fancy, crazy financial services trade show. If you've ever been to a financial services trade show, it's full of banks and things like that. And they all have crazy booths like this, like, you know, big investment. Um, I would never make an investment like this in a, a trade show booth because one, uh, you know, the company I was working for, FreshBooks, we didn't have a budget for it. It wasn't our brand. And, um, you know, just kind of silly. You know, we want to do things that are way more memorable and create experiences. Um, and that's where I bring you to a very, very important takeaway. So important, I made it big, bold, and in black letters. If you can't or don't feel like competing on other people's terms, just change the rules. That's what I've been doing my whole career. Um, you know, <laughs> I always break the rules. I don't break the law. I break the rules. It's a very different distinction, and it's very important. Um, rules, whatever, you know, break them. And how I broke the rules this time was instead of creating this giant booth full of whatever, we made our booth the Bluth Banana Stand. I created an exact replica of the booth. We, um, we had it in our booth. People were allowed to take pictures. We branded it. We made it as, as, you know, as original as possible. But taking it one step further, we also gave away 2,000 bananas as our swag for the event. So instead of giving away pens or mouse pads or whatever you do at, at conferences, we gave away bananas. And each one of those bananas had a unique uh, sticker on it with our logo. And it had a unique URL to go to a landing page. This idea is so brilliant. I know you guys are saying to yourself, this idea is brilliant. Um, do you want to know why it was brilliant? Um, it was mine. Usually when I do this in front of a live audience, I, I don't say anything on this slide and people giggle uncomfortably. I assume you guys are doing that um, as well. Um, so not only was it a brilliant idea because it's mine, but it's also a perfect example of laugh, think, cry. So let me break it down for you. Laugh. Fans of Arrested Development got the joke right away and they appreciated it. People who didn't make the connection or know of Arrested Development just thought it was something really interesting and unusual. Either way, people needed to see the booth. Seeing a 10-foot 
banana. This is for think. Seeing a 10 foot banana is going to make you think, even go as far as to scratch your head. And, and when, you know, you couple that with giving people actual bananas instead of, you know, pens and things like that. Um, people are going to be curious. They want to know what the catch is. What's the deal? Uh, either way, they needed to see the booth. We created an emotion, and, and that emotion was really like, you know, twofold. Arrested Development was a show with a rabid fan base. The idea spoke to them, made them an instant impact, while at the same time started conversations with the folks who had never heard about the show and just appreciated the small business connection of a fruit stand, you know, possibly triggered uh, memories of lemonade stands of the youth. And I got to tell you, the whole lemonade stand thing, so overused don't ever make a lemonade stand and and think it's cute for your company it's 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 been beaten to death trust me um as for actual crying laugh and cry uh this was done by the people in our row who spent 50 to seventy thousand dollar in trade show booths uh because um we got more attention so was this a success this is where people go yes yes huge success um let me let me give you some stats people love stats one third of all tweets with the conference hashtag were about our booth. Conference attendees suggested we win a prize for best booth without an actual prize existing. We were included in most of the coverage and wrap up uh, posts, which included, um, you know, 10 seconds or so on CNN. Uh, we gave out 2000 bananas. This is the thing that everyone loves to hear. We gave out 2000 bananas uh, with a sticker unique URL and saw that over 65% of the people who got a banana checked out the link, went to our landing page. You know, that, that laugh, think, cry. I've already given you one huge, huge secret right here. This is the most valuable talk of this whole conference because you're leaving with something valuable. I'm going to give you one more thing value. There's a couple more things that are valuable, but I'm going to give you one more here too. Few people will tell you this, but I will. I don't, I don't care. I'm crazy. The secret to marketing is creating experiences people will share. I'm pretty sure I've said that already, so it's, you know whatever but um and this includes during global pandemics and things like that um creating things around laugh think cry now is even more important yes most of us are in our house yes we're starved for entertainment yes you know we're binging netflix and stuff like that but man this is such an important time for your brand to stand out from from a standpoint of sheer survival you got to make some some really interesting stuff and keep marketing right now. I guarantee you nobody wants to be spammed 50 times with emails uh, uh, right now begging you to buy something. You have to give them something to earn their love, earn their respect, and get them to want to buy something and spend money with you. Um, and that's sort of where I'm I'm leading with this. Uh, one of the things that um, I've learned and, and you know, I, I've learned by being a uh, you know observant and letting you know 1970s 1980s um, uh, candy uh, mascots talk to me in my sleep, um, but you know this is this is what what Fruit Pie the magician told me in a fever dream, and you know you guys can say whatever you want about Fruit Pie the magician, he's a pretty pretty smart pie i guess and magician um so so this is what he told me in my fever dream uh, a little more than 10 years ago uh, marketing is about influence influence is not about influencers man am i going to talk about influencers in a second because that has exploded since uh fruit pie told me this and i still stand by my statements Influence comes from making a connection. Connections come from experiences. Experiences must include emotions. Emotions come from entertainment. Entertainment comes from magic. Magic equals marketing. You may look at that and think that is the biggest piece of nonsensical fluff you've ever seen in your life. But um, I'm going to tell you, it isn't. Magic is everywhere, but influence isn't and shouldn't be. The thing I take away from Fruit by the Magician is that you should inspire people to, um, to do things for your brand, not influence them to do things. I can't speak enough about how broken the whole influencer model is. And it's not the way that you create really great word of mouth marketing. Um, I'd rather see you do stuff like this. So this is a project that, um, that, that we, we worked on with Yamaha. It's called Random Acts of Music, sharing the gift of music uh, with those with hearing loss. So, um, you think of a uh, Yamaha Music, a, a really wonderful company that um, 
creates musical instruments uh, as well as, you know, audio equipment and a bunch of other things, but the music equipment and, and their number one goal as a business, and I might be speaking for them. So this might be their, not their actual mission statement, but their number one goal is to really um, give people the gift of music. So, you know, when, when it comes to people with hearing loss, who've maybe never um, appreciated music or, or been influenced by music, that's a really interesting challenge because you could give out free, you know, instruments in, in as a part of a contest or something like that. But to really create laugh, then cry, create something that's really going to move people, create a real emotion, you've got to do something far, far more interesting. Uh, so um, what they did was um, they actually gave out... Um, uh, cochlear implants. I always struggle on that word. Um, so if if their brand mission is to bring music to to people, then why not actually bring music to people who've never experienced music because of hearing loss? And they um, they fixed hearing loss for for a fair number of people. I'm going to play this video. I probably won't play the whole video uh, because it's long, um, but I, I want you to see a little bit of it. I've been to some very fine restaurants with some very good friends when I dined alone. I love music. And then to all of a sudden not be able to hear that is, there's a depressing element to that. Music was my life. So when I started losing that, it was, it was pretty devastating. And to have it taken away, you're, you're not whole. I was a music teacher and church musician until I lost my hearing. I could sit at my grand piano and not hear a thing. The cochlear implant is the first commercially available artificial sensory device. What it tries to do is... I've been... So, so I love that example because think of a brand who really understands, you know, going that next step, figuring out that laugh, then cry formula and doing something completely unexpected. We are all in our homes for the most part right now. We are dying for brands to show us something cool. This is such an opportunity in April. Uh, in April, just as the pandemic was, was sort of going into full swing and we were all stuck, I wrote a blog post that got a lot of attention where I, I talked about how brands need to be taking chances right now. And I even said, you know, KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, for the older people, uh, I said that they have to change their slogan from finger licking good to finger washing good uh, because that would stand out. And uh, they actually ended up doing it about a month ago, six months after I suggested. And I know they saw it because, you know, LinkedIn tells you who reads your, your things and stuff like that. I don't care that they, they took my idea. It's not that, you know, it's not like it's one of those ideas that nobody could have thought of. The, the thing that bothers me is they didn't do it at the right time. They did it when, you know, they, they didn't take the chance to do it when they really should have taken the chance and would have got a lot more play on it when it was much more in the news. Um, brands need to take chances right now. Brands need to stand out. Um, otherwise, you're not going to have a brand. It's as simple as that. Um, you know, how many restaurants are out of business? How many like places have gone out of business? Because they, they're, they're taking a wait and see attitude towards, um, you know, COVID. Uh, I'm telling you, if you wait and see, you're going to wait and see, you know, something horrible. I'm going to give you a hundred more ideas to inspire you because that's what uh, I do. Um, so I've told you a couple things, but creating word of mouth conversations is really easy force people to ask questions. If you look at uh, me and a mime there, I hire mimes and magicians and people like that all the time to go to networking events with me because I don't really like talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, I'm like an extroverted introvert um, or an I don't know, whatever. I'm, I'm comfortable when, I, when I'm comfortable and I'm not comfortable when I'm not comfortable. But man, you bring a mime with you somewhere, people are going to want to talk to you. You don't have to go talk to them. And also when you bring a mime, you're no longer the creepiest guy in the room. So it works kind of two ways for me. Um, make people scratch their heads. 
make them wondering why are these people giving out bananas? What is going on here? Oops. Um, you know, it is so important to make people scratch their heads. Try a hundred things. You know, I keep saying we do a hundred little things. If you see the caricature at the bottom there, um, you know, we went to a, a word of mouth conference and uh, I hired a caricature artist to be kind of like my networking partner. And this person just sat and drew people um, for, you know, five, 10 minutes at a time, because, you know, people's ego and vanity, and I fall into the same category. If you're being drawn, you're, you're going to sit and wait for your, your, uh, your drawing. And uh, that time I, I'm allowed to sort of talk to you and you're not going to go anywhere. Take chances, do different things. You know, no one's going to talk about you if you don't give them something to talk about. Um, Another example, and I know these are kind of like in real world examples, um, you can still do stuff in the real world. People are gonna see it, it's a lot less noisy out there. Um, just a lot of things. So, um, you know, I, I, I've done some work for Foxtel in Australia, the television network. Uh, they had the uh, Australian rights for Mayans MC, uh, which is, um, you know, spinoff from uh, Sons of Anarchy TV show. So to promote Mayans MC in Australia, we created our own little motorcycle gang. We got these jackets made. People went around the streets and in, in motorcycles, terrorized people, and just sort of created a bit of a, a stir, uh, drawing a lot of attention to themselves. On the day that the premiere launched, um, we actually did a thing with Uber where people in the, in the uh, um, you know, people got picked up by the motorcycle gangs and, uh, you know, created the larger experience. You have to be creating experiences for people to talk about. Uh, Freshy. Freshy is a, a international um, uh quick serve uh, salad company, not fast food, but, you know, healthy. I don't know what the term is. Anyways, um, what we did with Freshy, we, we created a, a uh, full page ad where we basically did an open letter to the CEO of McDonald's. And we basically said, you know, the tide is turning. People don't want bad for you food as much as they do. Um, we're not saying that McDonald's should close. We're not saying anything. We gave McDonald's a, an opportunity where they could literally give us a small hundred square foot footprint in all of their McDonald's where we would sell really great salads. So we're not telling people don't get French fries, but get French fries and a really great salad. And, um, and we'll be there to help you. And, you know, the, the letter goes on to talk about, you know, the changing attitudes towards health, changing attitudes towards fitness and blah, 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 and overweight and malnourished, undernourished people. This full page ad got picked up by USA Today, got picked up by the Wall Street Journal, got picked up by a lot of media places. We did not get a response from McDonald's, nor did we expect one. The goal of this was to create you know, the brand. The goal was just to get media to talk about this. The goal was to start a longer, uh, larger conversation. People always ask me, you know, especially when I talk about this example, where'd you get this idea? Where do your ideas come from? I am a creative genius but not only am I a creative genius, I always tell people there are no new ideas anymore. If I have a superpower, my superpower is knowing that I know every idea that's ever been done and I can take a little bit of this and a little bit of this, a little bit of this and make a new idea. I am inspired. I'm not influenced. I'm inspired by television, I'm inspired by books, movies, you know, conversations, everything. This idea is straight from Mad Men when, when Draper whatever agency it was called at this time, they changed their agency name a handful of times. Um, they took a full page ad and said they will not um, work for tobacco brands anymore. This is an updating of this idea. This is a reimagining of this idea. Um, don't be afraid to use ideas that have been done before. As long as you don't completely steal the idea, that's not good. But, um, but man, make ideas your own, reinvent them, reimagine them. There's so many like ways to do this. Um, you know, people aren't going to conferences anymore. People don't, um, you know, go out as much, but people are still using bathrooms. Um, for a brand name, Woosh, Woosh is like 
Purell for your cell phone. The screen in your phone needs to be clean. It's 10 times dirtier than a toilet. Uh, we, Gorilla Style, um, went into the uh, uh, Consumer Electronics Show, the largest, uh, you know, largest consumer electronics show in Las Vegas. And uh, we put uh, an 11 by 17 uh, inch sticker on the back of every bathroom stall so while people were sitting using the bathroom they got this message about toilet texting and they're invited to come to the booth and uh, to get their phone cleaned these sort of things stand out you have to create things that stand out because if you're not doing anything worth talking about, nobody's going to talk about you. So what can you do while everyone's at home? Um, we were part of the rebrand for a company called Nuvango. Nuvango is a uh, company that takes um, original works of art, puts them on home products like pillows, blankets, carpets, uh, as well as cell phone cases and and uh, everything like that. Um as a way to, uh, so for, for many years, Nuvango operated, it was uh, by invitation only to have your art featured on their product. And then they decided to open up to a much wider audience. So how, so not only did they change the company name, but opening up to a wider audience, how are you going to get that wider audience to know about you? We bought the three of the back covers of a magazine called, um, uh, High Fructose Magazine. It's a it's an art magazine. People who are are very artistically minded would know about it. People who are professional artists would be following High Fructose. We bought the back three cover. The we bought three months in a row of the back cover. That first one was completely blank. If you see in the top picture, and it just had instructions on the back. Have you ever wanted to be on the cover of High Fructose? It had instructions, and what the instructions were, you had to draw the cover of the magazine, but you had to do it right on the magazine. It couldn't be digital. You had to use pen to paper, brush to paper, crayon to paper, whatever. Couldn't be digitally altered uh, at all. And uh, and then you had to share it on, on social. And, and, you know, we clogged up social and got a bunch of attention. And we got a bunch of people to apply to have their art, um, you know, on the platform as well as we did award. Um, two of the really coolest pieces of art to be on the back cover in an ad, you know, for new Van Gogh. Um, this worked in so many different ways. And I know some of you are saying, well, it smells a little like spec work. I'm very anti spec work. So we covered that. Anyone who participated and, and did a really great job, got a very small uh, financial consideration for taking the time. So imagine that we're, we're almost paying people to participate in a contest. They didn't know they're being paid. We just don't like to take advantage of artists. It's, it's not very good and it's poor form, but this um, created a huge stir and it really fueled the rebranding. And this is something that was done completely directed at people indoors and got people talking. Um, I don't know how I'm doing for time. So um, I'll, I'll tell the story really quickly. This grainy photo or image is from uh, 2007. Uh, at the time, FreshBooks, or 2008, the time uh, FreshBooks had Ivan. This is Ivan with the briefcase and the mascot and, and everything. And he was part of every banner ad and every image and, you know, 2007, 2008, 2009, people actually did banner ads. You guys can look it up in the way, way, way back machine or something. Um, but this is Ivan, and uh, Ivan was the mascot of the company. And one day the, the CEO came to me and he said, uh, we need to, to kill Ivan. You know, let's let's come up with a, uh, a new, uh, something to replace him. So again, when you're trying to come up with ideas, sometimes being literal is the best way i heard we need to kill ivan so i wrote a plan on how we were going to literally kill our mascot and my proposed plan and i should let you know this is the only idea i've ever pitched that's not true i pitched a lot of ideas that didn't get to going but but um i pitched this idea it did not actually happen i like to tell people it didn't happen but this to this day is still one of my favorite ideas um we were just going to keep running ads with ivan but over a course of six months he was going to get thinner and thinner and thinner until finally he was sitting in a chair and then in one ad he would just like be like you know hunched over and and you know pass away and we, we'd release a press release saying that our mascot passed away and if you'd like to make donations to a charity um please do and oh by the way you know here's our new mascot it's a squirrel um this idea was not appreciated i love it i still think it's the greatest idea i've ever had um but it shows 
This is the level of creativity and this is the level of thinking you actually have to do to get noticed. This is the busiest, noisiest time I have ever seen marketing wise. You know, there's so much noise on social media. There's so much noise everywhere else. People are not having conversations about brands anymore because our mindset is not of that to be in a business focus right now. We're worried about our health. We're worried about, you know, anything. We're talking about all the movies we're watching on Netflix where, you know, all the shows we're binging. And that's why companies right now, if you're going to survive, have to take a much Concer much larger concerted effort into your word of mouth marketing. You have to be getting your fans to talk about you. Um, so uh, another example here, and uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm going to skip this one. Have you ever noticed, uh, have you noticed I never mentioned influencers? It's not really true. I actually mentioned influencers a fair bit, but I am going to go into uh, why influencers are not the way you create word of mouth right now. Um, and it's really important because a lot of people think influencers are an easy uh, win and you write a check and, and gold happens from it. Uh, this is what influence online looks like. It, it's basically, you know, forcing people to do things. Um, this never, ever, ever works. I, I'm telling you, like, trust me. The way you get uh, the, the whole backbone of influence uh, or, or influencers is KLT, no like, and trust. If somebody tells me to do something, if I don't know them, I don't like them, and I don't trust them, there's a zero chance I'm going to do any of that. If a celebrity, um, you know, tells me to do something, I might know them, I might like them. I'm not going to trust them because I know they're getting paid to do it. If you don't have complete no like and trust, you're wasting your money on influencers. Okay. Um, before Charlie Sheen got HIV, and I put an asterisk, you know, you know, allegedly when I say this, uh, he suffered uh, from insanity as a result of untreated syphilis. That's, you know, allegedly. Who really knows? Um, but... And this is a tweet I made, which I, I still think is funny. All this Charlie Sheen stuff is upsetting me. I choose to remember him when he was in control and shooting guns at Kelly Preston. You guys can look that up. He actually shot Kelly Preston with a gun. Um, but anyways, like 100 years ago, there was this thing on the Internet called clout. And they tried to create a standard for influence. It was a clout score. And they measured all these different things around social media. And uh, when Charlie Sheen was going crazy, when he was talking about tiger blood and all that stuff, he had the highest clout score in the world. So by this standard of influence, he should have been the most influential person anywhere. And by influence, that would mean that any product he told you to buy, you'd run out and buy. If he told you to, you know, jump off a bridge, you'd, you know, you'd jump off a bridge. If he told you, you know, wear a mask, you'd wear a mask. We need a little Charlie Sheen wear a mask talk right now. Um, but that, that really shows, like, nobody would have wanted him promoting a product. He was, he was having a mental breakdown and going crazy. So the fact that, you know, if there's one thing to learn about influencers is that celebrities have an audience, but not real influence. Um, you know, this is the thing people make the biggest mistake on. Audience does not translate to influence. Um, and while celebrities have an audience, so do you. And that's another thing people don't, don't realize. So, um, Ignore, you know, ignore celebrities, even little internet ones. And you need to make your fans influencers. You need to make the people who love your brand talk about your brand. You need to make these people your influencers. So, um, uh, uh, you know, handful of years ago, before Gary Vaynerchuk was Gary Vaynerchuk, I like to say I discovered Gary Vaynerchuk. So, so there you go. Um, a, a couple of years ago at a conference called South by Southwest, a large, uh, you know, internet and music and media conference in Austin, Texas, um, we created a series of, of baseball cards called Internet All-Star Baseball Cards. And we, we gave them away to anyone we talked to and we put them in the bags of the conference swag bag. And, and you know, we had people like Gary Vaynerchuk on it and Tina Roth Eisenberg, um, you know, 
two really, really famous people. And Tina is someone I love and adore to this day. She's, you know, one of the most, you know, important people in the creative community, at least in on the New York side of things, and, and very, very important people. So we put two famous dish people on our cards. But we also put people like Marjorie Case, who at the time, um, and all these people were FreshBooks customers, so that, that's the other connection, but nobody would know who Marjorie was. And it was so important to have, um, you know, people that you you wouldn't necessarily know. If you look at the card on the back of the card, it had all the contact information of these people. It had, you know, what they're famous for, what you should hire them for, what their skills were. And the only real branding for our company was at the front where it said FreshBooks Painless Billing. Out of a set of 20 cards, we used three famous people. Chris Brogan was there as well. And the other um, 17 people or 18 people, I think there was 21 cards. Uh, we use regular people. And I use regular in quotes because these people were special. But um, the, the reason we used regular people is because it was something so important for us to do. Regular people would communicate our message with passion and appreciation. While not everyone may know who they are, they did have targeted followings. Um, you know, the, people knew them. They had a following. It might not a big one, but it was a targeted following. So, um, you know, I, I said we gave out these cards to everybody. We also created about a thousand extra cards for people who were featured on the cards. Everyone who's featured on the cards was at South by Southwest. So we made sure that, you know, they would get handed out and stuff. So there was thought put behind it. But I'd say, you know, 75% of this was really done altruistically and for the right reason. So again, this goes to know, like, and trust. You may not have a huge following, but the following you have know you, they like you, they trust you. If I tell you to do something right now, maybe a 50-50 chance, you know, I tell you to read a book or watch a movie, 50-50 chance you're going to do it. If your best friend tells you to go, you know, read a book or watch a movie, there's an almost 90% chance you're going to do it because of know, like, and trust. So, you know, I, I, I love to bring this up. People with hundreds of thousands of untargeted followers who promote several things a day are actually less value than somebody with a thousand followers or 750 followers, but are actually targeted to what you're doing because smaller and targeted followings will continue to talk about you well after you know, whatever 24 hour commitment or 72 hour bump you get from your famous influencer. I'm going to take a drink because my throat's getting a little dry. <clears throat> and it's so important to understand this about, you know, influence. It is impossible to be influential without context. That's what we, you know, talked a little bit about Charlie Sheen. Um, you know, that's a famous quote. I'm sure you guys know who said it. You know, when I do this in a live show, everyone giggles right now. I said it about 45 seconds ago. I'm not trying to influence you. Um, I hope this has inspired you to take a chance on that person with 1,200 targeted followers because they have a greater voice than the, with over those 1,200 people than Charlie Sheen or any other person online, and they'll be far more loyal. If you create influencers out of the people who love you if you create champions you give your amplification to people who love your brand they will be loyal forever and not just loyal for the amount of time that you're paying them and again this goes back again to making experiences that people want to be a part of and that people want to talk about um again so uh, you know i'm going to say this over and over and over and over and over People will not talk about your brand unless you give them something to talk about. Just because people are at home, just because we're in lockdown, we are social creatures. We want to share things that we love. We want to talk about things. So in closing, and I'm sure you guys are excited that this is almost over. Um, in closing, and I use this slide because my parents, um, they, they always hoped that I would be a lawyer instead of a world-renowned, world-class marketer. If you remember nothing else from this talk, please make it these few things. Laugh, think, cry. When you're coming up with brains, when you're brainstorming for ideas, you're figuring out what is, you know, what we should be doing, what we should put our brand on. 
it has to hit two of three of these buckets or it's not a great idea. If you can hit all three, that's amazing. It's probably gonna be gold. If it only hits one, it's not gonna resonate as long and far as you think. If you just make someone laugh, Maybe they think about you for a minute or two. If you make someone just cry, well, that's weird. Um, and, you know, you really want to make them think and laugh or laugh and cry or cry and think. They're all interchangeable, but it's so important to remember laugh, think, cry. Um, you know, you're probably saying to yourself, oh, this is really cool. You're, you're so handsome and you're so smart. How can I do this for me? Well, I've already told you like 15 different ways, but here's another way of just sort of tying it all together. And, um, and, and I, I put this together quickly. So there may be some typos, just these three slides. Everything else was done with, with all of my heart. Um, your ideas need to be cool. If it's not worth turning to your friends and saying, you'll never guess what I saw today. It isn't really going to carry through word of mouth. Um, you know, the way you wish lower prices, are rarely worth talking about, uh, but a sidewalk pop-up shop or stopping traffic is, you really, really, really have to stand out. Your ideas need to matter. Changing a logo isn't something that people talk about for long, unless like you're the Gap. I don't know if you guys remember when the Gap changed your logo. People lost their minds. Uh, to create real shareable conversations, you need to figure out uh, what your customers are going to relate to. When, when I launched Zipcar, we did charity events like car smashing event because people who are interested in car sharing didn't want to own their own car. So we got a car from the junkyard. We got two sledgehammers and for $5 each, uh, people got to uh, got five minutes alone with a car and, and get out their frustration and the money all went to charity. Your ideas, like if they matter, they're going to resonate with people and that's how you're going to create your emotion. Um, your ideas have to be grounded in re reality. If people look at your idea and think it's BS or it's too far, then you've really missed your mark. Worse, th worse than that, over-promising something, like holy mackerel, do you, does your reputation get hurt instantly when you start over-promising? If your customers or clients or whoever smell that this is uh, that smell that this is likely uh, you know participation in the per blah, 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 blah. if they smell that you're you're over promising something is BS or whatever they're not going to actually participate in it and if if they don't participate in it the next time you ask them to do something it's going to be the same thing and and even worse and worse and worse. Um, you really have to think about your brand and how it ties in and how people are going to like really talk about it. And um, your ideas need to be easy to do over and over and over. And for everybody, is your idea inclusive? Will everybody dig it, enjoy it? Or is it too specific to a certain group of people like only moms or only people with a certain number of social media followers? Keep your ideas easy to follow through on no crazy rules or guidelines. Word of mouth does not need to be a promotion. It can be part of your business like Rudy's in Austin, Texas with their machine and stickers. Um, Rudy's is a really um, incredible barbecue place in Austin, Texas. And they have these, these um, weird looking machines in every one of their locations and they're automated hand washing machines. And you put one hand in each of the slots and it's basically like a, like a, a washing machine for your, for your hands. And uh, when you come out, they give you a sticker that said, I washed my hands. Um, the sticker is the word of mouth. Okay. <laughs> as silly as it sounds, those voting stickers, you're creating something to signal someone else to have a conversation and talk about it. And it's so important. Um, last thing, I know you guys are, are happy. This is almost over probably. Last thing, Know where the line of good taste is with your customers and step over the line um, because crossing the line is where the conversations happen, but make sure you don't cross too far and offend people. You want to shock them, not stun them. When I tell people to cross the line, you want to go two baby steps over the line because if you're just on the line, you're probably doing the same thing everyone else is doing. If you're too far behind the line, you're not doing anything worth memorable. You have to cross the line and go above what people expect. You have to give things to people they never imagined your brand would do and keep moving up and up and up and up and up. Trying too many things from this talk wouldn't be a great idea, um, but really my only hope is that you'll try something. You know, get out of your comfort level. 
do something to form some real relationships with your customers. Because if you have real relationships, you can ask for favors. If you have real relationships, you can make a mistake. If you have real relationships, you can weather some bad times together and they will still support you. So it's important, make relationships, take some chances and step over the line. Um, and when you do, you'll probably get you know emails like this. Saul, you don't know me, but I wanted to share a story with you about an hour ago. I overheard three women talking about you at the Denver airport. That's three women, ladies and gentlemen. They were recapping some stories you told in the class you taught a few days ago. And while I wasn't in your class, I have seen you speak before. I know you preach about creating experiences. So I drew flowers on a notepad, went over and delivered the flowers to the women from you. They were really impressed. Keep being you, man. I like what you stand for, Max. When you do stuff, people notice. When you don't do stuff, nobody notices. So please, 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 please do stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. So amazing ideas. I was like, <laughs> really interesting uh, talk. And I got so many ideas for myself. You know, I'm also in marketing. Uh, so for me, this was really, really inspiring. And I'm sure also for the rest of the audience as well. Thank you for sharing all the insights. Also, like, you know, giving a lot of hints. I think like, you know, everyone got it by now. <laughs> you gave them a lot of hints, like how to come up with the ideas and uh, also the three things that they should remember if they want to get started. Thanks again for sharing everything and for joining us. Um, the storytellers. My summit. pleasure. Bye.